Knicks against Aaron Sorellis. It is game number three. Black-white mid-range on both sides, I believe. Black-white mid-range, not black then. For Sorellis. And it's an Eily Eternal Pilgrim there for Aaron. For Pattis to transgress the mind, he wants to take a look at the grip. You'll find a couple of copies of Sadisi on Dead Vizier. A Gideon as well. Actually, that's, is that three? that's three copies. Jeez. Along with Gideon and then a transgress the mind for Aaron as well. So Pat's going to write down this information and select a card. That's a couple of Sadisis there, huh? Yeah, three. Now, that's a card that I always found really interesting because that card's definitely powerful, but just didn't see a lot of play in the previous format. Again, I think that might be because Rally just ended up pushing out a lot of decks and a lot of cards out of the format. Sure. And the, the power of that card in this deck, not only is it the tutor, but it's a way to sacrifice your hanger back walker, yep. which can be critical in certain situations. There are games where you run into hanger back walker getting real big on the battlefield. It's a 4-4, four, 5-5, four, five, five, and you really just want tokens. You want the flyers. You want the evasion. Um, and often you can't get it off of the board. You attack your opponent's chump blocks. They take some damage, whatever the case. And you're like, man, I want my creature to die. And so having a card like Sidisi where you cash in your creature for an advantage can be a pretty big draw. And then you get the tutor, too, which is always a delight. We take a look at Pat's hand now from the Transgress the Mind. Two Gideons along with an Archangel, Avacyn, a Stasis Snare, and an Eily, Eternal Pilgrim. Stasis Snare going to bite the dust there from Transgress the Mind. Aaron will write down the contents of the grip. And then I think we'll be heading back Pat's way after Aaron plays a land for the turn. And we see some of the other cards that line up well. Exile exiling cards out of these black-white decks is great when you have a card like Wasteland Strangler. Yep. Gives you something to process later. And if you're doing it with a card like Stasis Snare, even if they destroy your enchantment later in the game, they're not getting their creature back. It's an Eily Eternal Pilgrim for Pat. Did not find a fourth land off the top of the deck, though Aaron Sorellis did. So he'll play a Caves of Coilos. One of the lands that Aaron actually played last turn was a copy of Forsaken Sanctuary. That's that black-white enters the battlefield tap land that we see from Shadows of Rannistrad. Now here's a Hanger Back Walker for two. Yeah, sometimes you have to make a compromise on your mana base to make it more consistent. You know, if you don't have a whole lot of one-drops, it's not a big deal to have your your land coming to play tap. Yeah, it's not the sexiest land in the world, that's for sure, but it gets the job done. And it looks like we might see the interaction I was just talking about. We've got triple Sidisi with a hanger back walker on the field. Pat Cox could really use a Cabal Therapy right now. <laughs> just something that would be useful. Well, we've got a Cabal Therapy in the format right now and pick the brain. That's true. Pretty close. Here comes an attack with Eile Eternal Pilgrim. There's Pick the Brain. You got Delirium. You can get them all. That's for sure. I actually had this card at the pre-release. Actually, pretty good and limited. I've always generally liked Coercion Effects, and this is a slower limited format. Sure. So, not bad. Now, here's a Declaration in Stone. All right, that was pretty important for Patrick to be able to get that guy off the board. But the clue! But the clue. But the clue. And actually, the clue is pretty helpful here because Pat knows Aaron's hand is three copies of Sidisi. So, Aaron really needs a fifth land, but sometimes you just get it with your draw stone. Sure. So that makes things really easy. Yeah, it's just waiting on the top of the deck for you. Here comes Eile. And now here's Sidisi. And in these slow, grindy games, those clues are going to be more significant. Yeah. You know, in our last match, I, I, I think we saw Emma win her match with one or two clues still on the board. And happy to give away clues from Decl Declaration and, and, and happy to give up some clues yeah. because the game's just going to end so much faster. Here, I, I can't imagine that these games are going to end with clues just sitting around unused. You know, outside of the situations where players don't play enough lands or yeah. something like that. Let's see what Sorellis wants to search for. He is digging for something in particular. I'm just a little unsure. A lot of options here. Gideon's, there's a Languish you see, a Secure the Waste, Westvale Abbey. Remember, this is not something you actually have to reveal. It looks like maybe Anguished Unmaking because that is kind of a catch-all in this situation. Yeah, I mean, he, he can think about getting one of the big planeswalkers in Soren. Well, he's made his decision. I'm sure we'll see what it is soon enough for Pat Cox. It's a transgress the mind, so we're going to find out <laughs> right now. <laughs> what do you pick? Too bad. And it was Anguish on making, so a nice little catch-all here. Two Sidisis to go along with that. We'll see what Cox does want to select. There is the brand-new instant. Give you a good reason to play white-black. Exile target, non-land permanent. You lose three life, but I think that's a price most players are be willing to pay. Well, Black White has the backup for that. Their creature land gains them life. Mm -hmm. The new Soren gains them life. Um, they can sack creatures to the Eile to gain life. So the, the life loss is not 
a huge drawback here. Looks like Anguish on making is going to bite the dust. We're going to head back Sorellis' way. Aaron will draw. Now remember, I think a great blocker. Great attacker, great blocker. Death touch, very nice, and plenty of lines of text that are all positive. Now here is an attack, and I think, yeah, Pat says, I'm going to block. Yeah. There's a land. It's a trade they were each willing to make there. Now here's Sidisi. Sacrifice Sidisi. Got to go exploiting. We'll see what the tutor is going to be this time. Sure. He, he was careful, very wisely careful the first time, getting something that he didn't mind having picked out of his hand. Mm -hmm. This time he's going for a big payoff card. Yeah. There's a Forsaken Sanctuary. It's a land, which is great, but unfortunately for Pat, it's going to end the battlefield tap. A little slow. Yep. Now, I've heard you talking about this, the, the new cycle of lands, and you love kitschy nicknames for cards like that. That's not true at all. I, I, no, you just, I, made, you I, just made that up. I'm, I'm sure that's what I've heard no, of you. No, you. Just, you just made that up. I actually hate catching the games. Ha ha hand lands? Yeah, that's, that's a Soren. That's that is, the Grim Nemesis. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Soren. It's going to go up. You want to talk about lines of text that are relevant. It's got three of them. Reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to its converted mana cost. Nothing like nuking your opponent while you draw <laughs> extra cards. Yeah. yeah, flip the Languish. So take four, Pat. And go ahead and try to get a creature onto the board to fight this Soren. <laughs> now that I have the Languish in my hand. Now, if you minus this thing, it deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and you gain X life. Now, the only real drawback of this card is that it costs six. But if you can get this onto the battlefield, especially in a matchup like this, you're probably in pretty good shape. Well, and, and it starts with so much loyalty. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to fight a card that starts with six loyalty and can tick up to seven immediately. It's going to tick up a Forsaken Sanctuary. No damage dealt. But that is the reveal. It's a land there for Aaron Sorellis. Oh, shucks. I only got to draw a card for free. That stinks, I know. Cox will write that information down. Now, I believe, if memory serves, Pat does have a copy of Archangel Avacyn in hand, as there's a Oath of Gideon. Going to bring in a couple of tokens along with it. I'm sure we'll see some uh, actual tokens make an appearance here. Yeah, some white core allies. There is the land. And there will be a passing of the turn. Cox is going to play an Archangel Avis in our first of the day. There's an ultimate price to kill that right away. Yep, the trigger on the stack. Yep. You know, not indestructible yet. Yep. We'll get that off the board. Very important that you do sequence things that way. But even if that had stayed on the board for a turn, the Soren's living through that attack. It has so much loyalty. I know the first Archangel Avicen that we've seen for the day did die very quickly, but expect to see more of that card this weekend, that's for sure. And ultimate price is a metagame call type of card. Depending on what you think you're going to see a lot of, it, it, if you're going to run into a lot of colorless Eldrazi, not a very good card to have in your deck. Yeah. If you're going to run into a lot of Angels, very good card to have in your deck. That's an interesting selection because that's the kind of card that I don't think you can play four of unless you're very sure of yourself. And if you're wrong, you're wrong in a real bad way. Yes. Here's a Gideon. That's going to bring along a Knight Ally. Creature type? Knight. Yep. Is it a human? We don't know. For what? For Gideon? Yeah. Or it's token? Yeah. <laughs> just, it's, yes. a, it's, it's a knight ally. Oh, yeah, the token. Yeah, it's a knight ally. We just hang out. I'm saying, I I is it a human? Unclear. We don't know. Yeah. And now here's a declaration in stone. So bye-bye tokens, no clues given. Patcock's trying to hang in there against this Sorn. It's going to be tough to do, though. Yeah, he's so far behind at this point. Here's a draw. Don't get a great look at what Sorellis picked up. You know, we, we know that he still has a Languish in the hand. Soren can go, go down to take care of the Gideon if he wants to. He still has a basically a Demonic Tutor in his hand. Yeah, and the DC. Yep. Sitting pretty strong right now is Aaron Sorellis. I mean, he could just play the DC and hide behind it. Yeah, doesn't even have to sacrifice it. 4-6 <laughs> body with Death Touch is pretty big. Yeah. A lot of options here. We'll see where he wants to start. He's going to start by drawing a card. Extra card? Yeah, never, never a bad place to start by sacrificing a clue. Case of Coilus was the draw. That's the land for the turn. Now, Aaron's kind of playing careful here. He, he's pretty sure he can't lose the game. He's just not sure how he wants to win the game. Sure. 
me, I'm sure. As there goes Gideon. So Aaron will gain a little bit of life here. He goes up to 22. He's definitely in a great position right now. Cox, not a lot of cards left in hand. And Aaron has a lot of options at his disposal. A lot of cards, a lot of lands, yep. a whole lot of Planeswalker. <laughs> I'm sure there's a string of cards that Pat could draw to maybe steal this one away. I'm not quite sure what they are at this yeah. stage. But you have to imagine there's something. I mean, it, it, step one is getting that Soren off the battlefield. Sure, I mean, if he peeled a Soren of his own here. Yeah. That is certainly step one. His own Planeswalker would eat his opponents, oh. stick around with some loyalty on it. He's and, and he is playing two Soren's. Yeah. So he's got something to draw to. Cox will take an action, and it's going to be another Gideon. So that will resolve. He'll get another Knight Ally. More Knight Allies. Yep. And then we'll pass that turn over to Sorellis. Sorellis will draw. Picked up a Gideon of his own. Nick Miller right now in the sideboard, sitting down with Kevin Jones, the New York player who's had a lot of success in the SSG Tour. As you see, Sorellis is going to reveal a Caves of Coilos. That'll be added to his hand from Soren. No more Mantis Riders for Kevin to cast, so I'm very interested to see what he's playing this weekend. I think he's going along a, a similar route with uh, Coco. Okay, so sort of Mantis Rider-esque. Yeah, trying to get the best creatures he can off of Collected Company. There's a Languish. That's going to clear some tokens. Now here's a Gideon for Sorella. So he'll have a token advantage right now. Yeah, he's slightly ahead. First token on the board. Mm -hmm. And obviously Soren is a pretty, pretty big edge. Yep. And the Oath is going to let him come in with an extra loyalty on his Planeswalker. Isn't that, Isn't that great? So I think technically Gideon should be at... No, it should still be at five. It's yep. at five. So Starts good. with four. Yep, we're good. Gets the extra counter. Just want to make sure. Yeah, when you have the Oath in play, you can immediately make the token if you want to. Yep. And still have your Planeswalker on the board. Combo. Yep. You know, Wizards tried to hide that one from us, <laughs> but we figured it out. Can't get anything by us. Yeah. Well, Pat's got his Gideon. Doesn't have an Oath to go along with it, so he's going to start by ticking it up and giving some beatdowns. The Knight Ally will very quickly block. Cox with a land. And he'll just pass the turn back. Sorellis will untap. A lot of mana at his disposal. He'll draw a card. A Swamp is the draw to go along with the Languish and another copy of Sidisi. He's had that Sidisi for some time now. And we'll see if he wants to fire up his Gideon to try to get the other Gideon off of the board. Mm -hmm. Going to draw a card first. A Blighted Fen. Oh, that's actually a very good draw. Yes, it is. Um, it gives him some insurance against another Archangel Avacyn. Now, that Blighted Cycle that we saw, those cards have not seen a lot of play. I think Blighted Fen probably the best of the bunch. Um, it's, it's hard to say because we've seen so little of them. But, it, you know, hopefully now that we don't have all the fetch lands in these four-color decks, there will be more space in the format for cards like this to, to see some play. Yeah, Blighted Fen, you know, Blighted Woodland saw a little bit of play in Ramp. Just a little bit. Yeah, but not a ton. Outside of that, we have not really seen a lot of the Blighted Cycle, but Blighted Fen right now, a pretty gosh darn good draw, as you mentioned. Now, here is Sidisi. Well, Sidisi's exploit trigger will be on the stack. Going to sacrifice a token. And, and in the old format, when we had perfect mana, there was no room to play a card like that. All of your cards in your deck were so powerful that you needed to be able to cast them consistently. Now we've stepped away from that. We've only seen two color decks so far, and it's gonna leave some room for some of these blighted cards to see some play. Well, Sorrell's gonna go tutoring again. He'll shuffle and present his deck over to Cox here in just a moment. Pat hoping it's not gonna be too bad, but here is Archangel Avison, as you mentioned, and Blight Defend does such a great job against this. Yes. For now, it'll be an untap and a draw. Well, and, and I believe Sorellis is short one mana from actually activating the thing. We'll take a look just to make sure. Correct. Familiar ourselves, familiarize ourselves with it just a little bit more. And it does. It takes five to activate. He's only got five. He's only got four excess mana. So now here's a duress. That's a hit. Now Archangel Avacyn on Aaron's side. <laughs> Jeez. Ultimate price was the discard. 
Is, is that an alternate art ultimate price? I think so. And it's kind of funny how much this game has ground down. Yeah, but Sorellis has such a... He still has such a huge advantage. Oh, he's so far ahead. He, yeah. he, he's going to be fine, but just, just these angels staring at each other, these planeswalkers staring at each other. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's almost comical. The, the cards are so powerful. And pardon us, he actually discarded Damnable Pact. Okay. So apologies. We'll take a look at that card. Target player draws X cards and loses X life. Okay. So here's another card that... Did not see play before. Correct. It, very powerful effect. Yeah. I mean, y y you can go after yourself. Yep. Huge amount of card advantage. Or you can try to nuke the opponent out with it. Yep. You know, it's a fireball. It was actually getting close to killing Pat with it. <laughs> very close, yes. Yeah. It's like Shandling Vent's going to get fired up here. We'll see where that wants to go. We'll find out where that's attacking. If it's going after Soren, if it's going after <laughs> Gideon... Yeah, it looks like it's going after Soren. It's probably all the same. No, a a Aaron has all the options here. Yeah, if this thing dies, then Abyssin Sugar will go on the stack to flip, which is a nice thing. Yeah, he, he needs to get his Abyssin bigger, and then the damage from Abyssin can, a work on a planeswalker. can be redirected to a Planeswalker. Yeah. Uh, Pat's going to make a token from Gideon. But that's not sticking around. No, that'll die. Now here's Archangel Avison. Yep. All right, trigger. Flip. Now I know how this one works. I had two of these in my draft deck on Wednesday. That seems above average. They were both passed to me. Well played. One of them in pack one. I'm, I, I don't have commentary for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't know what Tom Ross and Todd Anderson were thinking. That implies that it got passed to me through two people. No, but no. It did. Tom Ross, I, no. You, you must have gotten together with your family over the weekend. Okay. You know. Oh, my mom and dad were drafting. Yeah, yeah, with me. yeah. Gotten your eight-year-old cousins <laughs> yeah. together. You know. What's up, guys? You don't want that one. They, they only draft green cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Avicid is down now, as these planeswalkers are starting to work their way up. Here comes Gideon. Yeah, and this is just snowballing out of control yeah, at this point. Yeah, Pat can't do anything. He's just going to play the game out, and now he'll extend the hand. Aaron Terrell is going to win this match over Patrick Cox. Two games to one. The black-white mid-range mirror goes to the player on the left. And for Aaron Torellis, he's going to move up to 2-0. and So congratulations to him. And, again, we talk about decks that we think we're going to see this weekend. I know coming into this weekend, black-white mid-range has had a lot of hype around it because, first of all, there are some very obvious cards that you want to play. Island.